one of college football's most respected men and the impact he had on the college game. And when you talk about Arkansas, you think of Frank Rose. He is Arkansas. I'm with Jerry Jones, the uh, owner of the Dallas Cowboys. And Jerry, thank you very much for coming. Um, what did you learn as a player from Coach Frank Rawls that helped you be such a successful person in your business career? Well, 50 years ago today, Coach Rawls today, today came to the University of Arkansas. You know, he was a management major. And when he did sit down and talk a little football with me, it was all about numbers. He would say, Jerry, it's four against three, five against four. The coaches that coached for him, Barry Switzer, Jimmy Johnson, said that there was no peer as an analyst, as a coach. But more important than anything, yeah. he was the architect of a state's uh, emotional attachment to its only really significant sports team. And that's what Coach Brawls, he organized that, he put it together, and he did it right before young people's eyes. I was a young guy <laughs> sitting there looking at him, and there's no question he inspired me to get to sit here today with you and to, as the Cowboys. What did you admire the most about Coach Broyles as a person? Well, he always held his fingers up and said, uh, it's the fourth quarter. Uh, we've heard that before, but he said anybody can play when you're fresh. Anybody can play when you're not hurt. But in the fourth quarter, that's when you've got to turn it on and call on all your preparation. What Coach Brawls has done in his fourth quarter is absolutely amazing. His November of his life. Since he was 65, he's brought over a quarter of a billion dollars worth of improvements to the University of Arkansas Athletic Department. And more important than anything, he showed me yeah. and showed many others with his support and his caregiving to his wife, Barbara, with Alzheimer's. Yeah. He showed that, boy, when it doesn't feel good and when you don't have your speed, it's still time to turn it on and play in the fourth quarter. And to me, that's Frank Bulls. Oh, it is. It's wonderful, wonderful about him. Now you're the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, and for the first time, they got the best start in the history of the Dallas Cowboys franchise this year. What makes this team special? Well, I don't know. I wish we had that Hasman Trophy winner, Dorsett, <laughs> back with us playing for the Cowboys. But I think I give Wade Phillips so much credit. Uh, he basically has come in, and uh, the, our players are, are getting to uh, basically uh, have a role. Yeah. Uh, uh, everybody can be a pressure player if they've got any uh, speed or any will at all. And so uh, I think that, uh, of course, it's a trite thing to say, but mm -hmm. our team is playing as a team. It's nice to have that quarterback, too. Yeah. They look real good. By the way, you know any way I could get some Super Bowl tickets? Well, I thought I was your man. <laughs> You've been telling me that all these years. I know I can get them from you. Thanks a lot, Jerry, greatly. We're going to be on later on when you introduce Frank Bloss. Greatly. It'll be great. Now here to present. As we salute this sport's best tonight, it's also appropriate to honor a legend of college football. Yeah. Tonight we pay tribute to a man who joins the ranks of past contributions to college football winners like Tom Osborne, Vince Dooley, and Keith Jackson. Let's take a look at the life and storied career of Coach Frank Royals. The test of a good coach is that when they leave, others will carry on successfully. Perhaps no other coach embodies this adage on more levels than Frank Broyles. Born in Decatur, Georgia on December 26, 1924, Frank's athletic prowess earned him a football scholarship from Georgia Tech. A talented tailback that could kick and pass, Frank was awarded the Southeastern Conference Player of the Year in 1944. In the 1945 Orange Bowl, Frank threw for 304 yards, an Orange Bowl record that stood for 55 years. Although the Chicago Bears drafted him, Frank knew a shoulder injury would keep him from any pro football greatness. So he conceded to his second passion, coaching. Frank eventually became the head coach of Missouri in 1957 and left for Arkansas the following season. Arkansas had always been a coveted prospect for Frank and he went to work quickly. In his first season with the Razorbacks, Broyles went 6-4, but followed up with the championship in 1959, 60, and 61. And with that, the Broyles era was off and running. In 19 years as head coach, he compiled a record of 144, 58, and 5, won or shared seven Southwest Conference championships, made 10 bowl trips, and captured the 1964 National Championship in the midst of a 22-game win streak. His achievements as a coach are legendary. He expected much of his players and staff and gave much in return. 
No other head football coach can claim the legacy that Frank Broyles built in selecting, developing, and producing elite assistant coaches. 29 former Broyles players or assistants went on to lead programs. Barry Switzer and Jimmy Johnson are the only two coaches in football history to have both won an NCAA championship and a Super Bowl. And both men played for and coached with Frank Broyles. As athletic director, Broyles has seen his programs win 39 national championships, 57 Southwest Conference titles, 37 Southeastern Conference titles, and 20 bowl game appearances. He has overseen an estimated $235 million worth of renovation and construction on campus. Frank Broyles became nationally known as a color analyst, calling the week's top games with Keith Jackson on ABC for nine seasons from 1977 to 85. Recently renamed Frank Broyles Field is extraordinary, even by SEC standards. Fitting for a man who is currently the longest tenured athletic director in NCAA Division I history. Frank Broyles will leave his position at the end of the year to become a full-time fundraiser for the university, as well as continue his efforts in finding a cure for Alzheimer's, the disease that took his beloved wife of 59 years, Barbara. The fruits of Frank Broyles' contributions to the state, university, and to Razorback fans will benefit generations. There is no doubt that the University of Arkansas, forever tied to Frank, will carry on successfully in his absence. But as long as there are Arkansas Razorbacks, there will be Frank Broyles. Remarkable career, remarkable man, remarkable story. And